This Motata or Mopenwaing tree that stands in Mulepolule today as a heritage site was previously known as Box Number no. 1 in the Quening area. A place where Bakwena would gather to receive letters from loved ones away at war or at the mines. It is an example of various sites that represent the post office of yesteryear. It now exists as a reminder of a time when it was quite the event to receive a letter, not to mention being a proud owner of a box number, whichever form it came in. And for those who could not read and write, the postman appointed by Kosi would proceed to read letters to them. The distance some had to travel to receive their mail made for an exciting outing on a Saturday afternoon for those that were young at that time. As the years progressed and technologies improved, the post office remained an integral part of our social fabric. When the telephone was initially introduced, those who were fortunate enough to own a landline would first dial through to a post office, who would then connect them to the number of their choice using a mechanism such as this one. For those that could not afford a landline, the post office provided the only public booths in the village. Fast forward to today, where communication technologies are getting lighter, faster and more ubiquitous. And many in this generation have not once had the pleasure of writing or receiving a handwritten letter. Consumers now measure delays by the second. Forget days or weeks. At some point, the post office realized that if it did not reinvent itself, it would end up as an artifact in a museum, like those big old Bedford trucks of years gone by. In response to the new realities that threaten to further strip it of its stature, the post office endeavors to reclaim its position. Rather than be annihilated by the advent of newer forms of communication, it has embraced them and houses both new communications platforms and services under one roof. We now converge at the post office to renew our car registration, to collect Ipelejeng wages, to draft and submit business tenders, to reload our mobile money accounts, and recently, to purchase prepaid electricity. The post office realized that for it to stay relevant, it had to go back to its roots as the meeting place of the community, but in a new way. Discover more about this transformation tonight as our guests detail the latest ways in which Botswana Post is evolving to stay relevant and meet changing customer needs. Welcome to First Issues. From 1875, when it was established as the Runner Post Service, delivering mail via foot to the technologically connected parastatal we see now, with uncontested reach of close to 200 points of service across the country and a myriad of functions for the individual, for corporate and government, the Botswana Post has strived to reinvent itself into the modern meeting place. Looking at how the post remains upbeat and thriving, we had to ask whether the beliefs that advances in communication technologies would render its services irrelevant had any merit at all. This is a question we posed to the CEO of Botswana Post, Mr. Pele Moleta, during a recent visit to his office. Every Botswana had the reason to be concerned about the level uh, levels of uh, communications as or levels of services as provided by the post office. Uh, we are traditionalist post office providing basic uh, mail, parcel and money transfer services. And with the advent of uh, technology and ICTs, it made uh, less uh, use of uh, letters and uh, customers were using alternative meth methods of communicating with each other. So as an organization, we then had to uh, introspect and see whether we were still relevant to the needs of Botswana. So we, we went through a process and came up with a, you know, sort of a three-tiered approach where we said we needed to transform, we needed to modernize, and we needed to diversify our products and services. And it's particularly out of the modernization and uh, um, diversification 
that we've uh, gone out and uh, now repositioned the post office as a one-stop service centre. For us, what's important is that uh, we need to ensure that when Motswana comes through for services, they come to one point, get as many services uh, provided at that one location, so that uh, you know we continue to be relevant. Therefore, when one looks back, if the post office had continued to um, provide just mail services, ma mail and parcel services, that uh, sector in itself is actually in, in decline, and globally. We are seeing this decline at about 5% uh, per annum. Whilst in Africa and in Botswana in particular, we still think that there's probably still another three, four years of growth in that sector because there are still communities out there that don't have access to services. We believe that at a point there will be uh, start, uh, there's start to be a decline. And when that decline comes, we need to be in a position to offer alternative ways of serving the same customer so that we continue to be relevant to them. Therefore, the upbeat uh, mode uh, for us at the post office is because we've now seen ICTs as not a challenge. We've not seen them as a competition to the post office. We've seen them as an enabler to render more services through this uh, communication mode. Could this inventive spirit be unique to Botswana Post, or is it indicative of trends being witnessed all over the world? I think it's, it's generally uh, uh, worldwide, uh, let's call it a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, because as the post, we continue to build on the trust that citizens have had in, in us. But we then uh, have said, it can't just be trust. We need to be relevant. So we're addressing the current needs and future needs of our clients. And our client base is changing, and it's also requiring more services. Better, uh, you know, more, better, simpler, faster and cheaper. In past discussions, town planners have complained about poor distribution channels in our cities, including the simple delivery of a letter to someone's home. If I post a letter from the center of town, I should be able to calculate how long it will take to the periphery of our town. And this is what I'm saying is, that letter should leave the post office and go to my house. I should expect that letter to reach my house in a specific time. That's the efficiency of distribution. We leave the rural areas to go to the cities because we are looking for efficiencies of distribution and efficiencies of production. And once we lose on those, we become suburbs. Once we lose on those, we become towns. Once we lose on those, we become villages. Once we lose on those, we can become cattle posts. Our discussions with Mr. Moleta reveal that if everything goes according to plan, Mr. Musiangani's concerns could be a thing of the past. We're actually working on a project uh, in, uh, with the Ministry of Lands and Housing that uh, incorporates delivery to the household. We'll then be taking your mail and parcels and not delivering them to a post box. We'll be delivering those to your address at home. Mail, newspapers, groceries, Whatever it is that uh, is due to uh, Mr. Sisingi, we will take that delivery and deliver it to the household. Home deliveries are something we can only dream of as things stand. Due to what has been described as poor planning and design of our streets by the experts. Despite these reservations, our guest believes it is something that can be made a reality. Firstly, we need to renumber and rename our streets and actually have those uh, numberings co you know, uh, common. Let me give us an example. You know you used to, whenever you wanted electricity uh, collected to a house, you always had to give them a map of where that house is. You always had to give them a drawing or sketch drawing. What the Ministry of Lands and Housing are working on, the project is called LAPCAS. What they are working on is to electronically number and have uh, maps of all land parcels, both the land that's been allocated and the land that has not been allocated. When this process is complete, it means that we will have a full picture of how much land has already been allocated for what use, what land has been unallocated, what land is available for future projects, what kind of projects. When this uh, pro uh, uh, you know, project is complete, we will then have a unique numbering of uh, parts of the city. 
as you, as you currently know, when you use a plot number, you don't necessarily know where it is that you're going. When we have a common street na uh, name and numbering, we will then have what we call postcodes. As an example, uh, the government enclave may be postcode 1010. It would mean to somebody who's delivering uh, to that household that 10, the first 10 means is the first street on the left. And zero may mean center. The uh, second uh, 10 may mean first floor to the east. Because it's now a con common standard that will be in, in place, it, it will mean that every service provider will be able to locate that area. And that's when you start to then enjoy the benefits, especially out of your latest uh, vehicles, which have you know, uh, street maps. You'll be able to have a common address. And when you type in the address that you are going to, it will direct you seamlessly to the place you are going to. The post office has set itself some lofty targets. A merger with the Botswana Savings Bank and Botswana Couriers, the establishment of a commercial bank, which will start with 10 bank branches, and we assume a similar or more number of ATMs, and becoming government's 24-hour transactional hub. Surely this calls for superior IT systems, reliable power supply, and attracting and retaining high-level technical skills. In light of this, some observers say this is a bubble that will soon burst. However, the post office CEO does not get sleepless nights over this and is motivated by the energy and willingness demonstrated by his team to reinvent Botswana Post. The transformation of the post and, and particularly the energy which our people uh, bring in uh, says, uh, says to me and constantly uh, uh, says to me, you cannot disappoint your people. Your people have said we are willing to support, we are willing, we are ready, and we want to be a part of this future post. Because they've said we want to be a part of it, and they have, for now, for now have me as their leader, they're asking me to help them get to the uh, desired destination quicker. So what it means uh, you know, to me is that constantly, I need to be looking at ways of helping my, uh, my colleagues at Botswana Post work smarter, faster, in a manner that makes it simpler for the customer who's coming in to be able to access whatever service that they want to access. Because eventually, the post office is actually, you know, in this transformation, the post office is actually going back to its traditional role. The post office used to be a meeting place. It used to be a place where people go to to receive their mail. And because uh, villages did not have post boxes, mail came through in a, in a mail bag, and it was read out at the quarter. And people usually went to the post office at certain times to receive mail. Now what we are finding is that the more we innovate, the more products we bring to the post office, we are finding that more and more people are coming to the post office and more and more people are meeting at the post office. So in this transformation, it's funny that we're actually going back to our trusted meeting place. Welcome back to First Issues. When the prepaid electricity system was piloted in Khaborone Block 6 and Maruapula last June, it was quickly adopted by consumers around the nation who had long wanted a more usage surveillance and budgeting friendly system. As we speak, more than 54,000 installations of prepaid electricity have been made across the country, and close to 80,000 are expected by year end. Consumers, however, are growing increasingly frustrated with the difficulties they encounter when attempting to purchase said electricity. <laughs> Network 
ya network actually ke tabe re tswa hao tsena ha go tengwe re tswa motaka se tengwe thela go ta go na a go nene network a go sa network go ra gore ke apagama ke a gore ka motaka se go gongwe kgakala go ra re ke dirisa madi on top of madi ane le gore totale ke ntse ke budget le gore ke a go dirisa sometimes se a go sa network go re o re ke tsheka mo round ding ba di shopotse tete di mo round ding ha di na network go ra re ke tse phone e be ke letsa motho mong go gongwe a ba nthekela motaka se especially <laughs> whereby the institutions tell what they are going to do, they have operating hours. And again, this, is, this issue is system me down. All the time, it's system down, system me down. Botswana Post has partnered with one of the commercial banks to increase the ways and platforms in which consumers can now purchase prepaid electricity in an effort to eliminate some of the complaints raised by members of the public. We've recognized that our customers don't necessarily have the time to go to a post office during working hours. Our customers want convenience and they want to have access to services when they need them. We are partnering with FNB to provide uh, electricity, prepaid electricity purchase any time of the day. The eSolutions business director of First National Bank, Yolisa Phillips Lejoa, tells us more about this combination of skills and resources to address the situation and better customer satisfaction. As you know that Botswana Post was appointed as a super vendor for prepaid electricity. What then happened is that uh, they approached us because they wanted to increase their channels for people to be able to purchase prepaid electricity. What then happened is that uh, we made available channels, F&B channels for consumers to be able to purchase prepaid electricity in that if you want to purchase prepaid electricity, what you do is you would use our cell phone banking or you would use a virtual purchase, which is through dialing 174, star 174 hash to be able to purchase prepaid electricity. That does not confine you to being an F&B account holder. You can be an account holder for any bank for so long as it's a Visa card or a MasterCard. Systems are meant to make life simple and easy and convenient for the customer. And when the customer's life is made easy, it means that they can go on with their other uh, uh, requirements. They can go on with their life, not worried about cut-off time, closing time, because their bank is not sleeping. And the post office is also not sleeping. It's ensuring that Botswana can access the services any time of the day. Mrs. Phillips Lejoa is of the view that they were indeed the financial institution of choice to partner with Botswana Post in this endeavor. I'm sure you're aware that we talk about being the most innovative bank. And for us, what is always top of mind is providing convenience and efficiency for both the client and the consumer. So the driving force behind this, this collaboration with Botswana Post was to provide the ordinary consumer convenience. We want Botswana to be able to purchase prepaid electricity from wherever, whenever, 365 days in a year, 24-7. You don't have to wait for a particular outlet to open. With your cell phone, you can just dial in either using cell phone banking which is star 130, star 321 hash, and follow the prompts for purchase of prepaid electricity. Similarly, for those non-FNB account holders who have card-based, uh, who, have, who have cards, they'll be able to purchase prepaid electricity by just dialing star 174 hash and following the prompts. We're making it easier for Botswana and convenient. And just to actually further qualify that is that with the cell phone banking, it will be available across all networks. For the virtual uh, purchases which are card based, it will currently be available with B Mobile initially. And uh, we are hoping that by September, customers will be also be able to use our additional channels being your ATMs, the e-wallet and online banking. While this arrangement is a welcome initiative, 
One wonders if these kinds of technical transactions will not intimidate Botswana, especially those in the rural areas where we have most of our population. Botswana's needs, uh, Botswana's needs and, uh, and also requirements are constantly changing. And everyone wants convenience. Uh, everyone uh, wants services when they want them, as opposed to when they are provided. So Botswana have uh, come to accept, and I'll give you an example of some of the services that they used to get at a, a, a particular point. Botswana used to send money uh, to f their family members back home. When they sent money, they used to have to say, where do they expect the recipient to receive the money? So if I sent money back to my uh, grandparents in, in, in Madinari or in Bobono or in Soroe, I had to say they must collect the money at Soroe post office or at Rasabalai post office. The problem with that is Motswana may not be able to get to that particular post office on time. So the post office changed that setup and said, allow any Motswana when, when they are sent money to, to collect it at their nearest post office. So I may send money to my grandmother, uh, hoping and thinking that she's in Soroe. Meanwhile, she's gone to check one of her uh, grand, uh, you know, grandchildren in Silibi Pique. She's then able to go to the nearest post office in Silibi Pique and then cash the money. And Batona have told us this is one of those uh, things that has made their lives uh, simpler and easier and more convenient. Because the cost of travel between locations just to go and get a service has been so much of an inconvenience. Over and above that, most of uh, especially senior citizens have become accustomed to you know, receiving their uh, monthly stipends or tandabala code poso. In receiving the tandabala, they used to have to go to a particular post office where they were registered. Now they go to the nearest post office. It is this kind of innovations that they have accepted and actually continues to say to them, you can do more. And they are now saying they demand better and continuous improvements from the post office. So when we bring in additional services, we find a ready and willing customer who has been saying, thank you very much for the service. By the way, why is there at the post office they can also collect the daily news? They can also send a parcel. They can buy prepaid electricity, pay you their water bill. And the more, more service that we can provide in that one, uh, in, in one center means that we are cutting the amount of time that they needed to uh, move between the various utility service providers and companies to get the service. It means that we are co cutting the cost of doing business in Botswana. And that talks to improve, uh, productivity improvements. That also talks to competitiveness. From me, Namedzo Sibina, the team behind First Issues, and our strategic partner, First National Bank, we wish you a good night and pleasant viewing.